the cyber track of the battery world. So today we're going to be looking at something pretty special and this is a battery from Ericsson and if you don't know Ericsson that is a huge company in Sweden and internationally they're almost as big as Volvo probably. They're not as known in, since they're into telecommunication. We get a battery from them and I don't think it's for a smartphone. We don't really know what it is and it has a magical button. It has a Schrodinger button. It has a button that can be both on and off at the same time. Don't know why they did it like that. This one you can push in and that one goes like that. It's a magic button. It looks like it's on and off on the same time. But it's on when this one is pressed in and off when it's up. And it's a 48 volt. It does seem to have just two terminals, positive and negative. What? So it's minus 48 volt, zero volt. Yeah, it's a 48 volt battery, but why does it say minus? No, no, it, of course it has a lid. It has a lid. Oh, wait, what? A and B? <laughs> Do I dare touch them? No, I don't. What is A and B? A, destroy Russia. B, destroy USA. Oh, I, I, I don't want to take a chance. But why is there no communication? A high-tech battery like this should have like a million terminals. Maximum short circuits, 700 amps. And they also specify the time. Don't know what's in this. Do we dare open it? Many of the screws are empty. Screw holes are empty. Probably connect this one to a rack of some sort. Yeah, this is probably a module. Maybe they have like a Bluetooth function for all the communication. Feels like a computer case where you can remove one side. Actually gonna wear a glove for this. <laughs> it must be a capacitor, what else would you put between positive and negative? Interesting stuff. It seems to have electronics up here. Let's reveal the battery pack. Very soft UFO, very high quality. Surely this is machine spot well, but it seems to be off-center, not calibrated. Just look at that, for example. That is way off. Uh, from what I know of machine spot welding, you need to have something to guide it. Usually they like do a weld ring or something on the top and bottom of the cells, uh, so it can do the spot well at the perfect. Here it's just. I think this is more like the machine that EV don't recall and they have screw terminals. Do they have machines that do them? Because the reason you don't solder is because solders are so hard to QC control. And they had dual wires on 10 and 9. That's strange. And they also have dual on 15 and 14. Why would they do that? And this one was folded over when I opened it up. And they have blue cells with white rings. I would guess 50E, that's the closest. We won't be able to see if it's um, Samsung cells, but they do look like 50E, and we can check the capacity. I'm guessing is it 100 amp hours, 20P. Yeah, that must be it, 50E in 20P, <laughs> that's a lot of cells. So, let's do some kind of measurement, because if the batteries are good, then this pack is worth a lot. This is not from a business customer. He bought a couple of these used, uh, maybe at a business auction, a uh, disclosure auction, or something like that, and they're not working. We do have negative terminal here, and this is 48 volts, so it's 13, so we have the positive on the other side. So, let's do here, which is 14.15, and it's 3.3. .3. Let's just double check. 2.5, 3.9. So this is not. I know it goes like this or it goes ziggy saggy. On here we have 2, 4. This might be connected to the other side. It might only be half the battery. 
So we should measure here. This should be 1, this is 1415. And then we actually have 7.3, and that's not terrible. Well, if you take the pack apart and uh, test every cell individually, I think you can uh, revive most of them because they're not low voltage because of aging, they're mo low voltage because of uh, low discharge. We have two cell groups that is 1.1. Uh, my limit for where I um, revive cell is usually 0 0.5 unless they're really good like this so that should be split in two almost 0 0.6 this one even higher like 0 0.7 0 0.7 so these cells can be salvaged individually but you can't really do anything with the electronics unless you replace all the cells and uh, but still they are using 35e that's not a high current cell and they have a fuse for 700 so it can't be that high of a discharge 20p is a lot sure but uh, they went through capacity a very interesting build from one of the largest companies in europe uh, i don't think i have time to check the electronics since the battery cells are dead there's nothing really we can do uh, but we can thank uh, this guy for the look and tell him uh, the good and the bad news the cells could find some new life somewhere but the battery pack as a whole I don't think you can use that for anything really high quality shit and uh, it's not Ericsson who has designed this it's a company called Incel he talked a little about them when he left them here they had a different name I'm not sure if I know them I think I'm confusing them with all cell but I think we had some high-tech maybe a clean motion battery from Incel before uh, so they probably make large high-end batteries for the Europe market good stuff <laughs> what is this like 5,000 euros new 10,000 maybe the most expensive battery we had in but we won't offer sales replacement we cannot verify uh, that the electronics work and they may need to be repro reprogrammed after they're dead let's have a look at that you guys can see what I'm seeing really strange that you're calling it minus 48 why are they doing that more on that side is that for uh, English current maybe yeah, they must be for in rush current. Most likely they couldn't find a capacitor in the exact right value, so they needed to add several in parallel and maybe even series <laughs> to get that exact value. That's my best guess to why they did it like this. So let me know what you think about this cool battery.